Well, friends, uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is Malik Mujahid, uh, and uh, on a very short notice, you joining us in such a large number uh, means a great deal to us. And I'm thankful to uh, Burma Task Force, Sun Vision, and especially the Parliament of the World's Religions, and uh, other four or five interfaith allies who have sent out a last minute notices uh, for this webinar. We could have more time, but uh, many people have uh, informed us that such a major tragedy and not many people are active. So one of the closest allies with the Muslim community are uh, interfaith movement. So we are doing this especially for the interfaith movement. Uh, Myoma is the other name for Burma. Uh, most people who are dissident use the uh, name Burma uh, because military regime changed it to Myanmar. So we are following that tradition uh, to call it Burma. Uh, there are uh, uh, about 60 million people. Uh, largest minority religion in Burma is Christianity, uh, 6 million, uh, sorry, 6% of all Myanmar, about three to four percent are Muslims. Number of Muslims are not clear because the Rohingya uh, census, uh, although it all funded by the United Nations, was not properly done according to principles. So if they will say they are Rohingya, they will not register them. So we do not know the actual number uh, of Muslim community, but it is said normally three to four percent. There are 20 armed groups uh, fighting in Myanmar uh, since the military regime in 1962 started a racist policies of Burman first, Burma being the race, dominant race, which are all, all Buddhist. Uh, it is among minorities, uh, there are mostly other religions. Uh, there are five very active armed um, groups fighting the federal government for 50 years, including Kachin, uh, Shan, and other communities. A uh, good number of them are Christians, but uh, others are Buddhist as well. Uh, Rohingyas are one type of Muslims. About half of the Muslims in Myanmar or Burma are Rohingyas. And that's where uh, we believe a genocide is taking place. Um, in, in a matter of one week, all these villages which you see as a dot uh, were burned to ashes. And uh, by now there are uh, 284 villages in last 30 days which has been burned. Focus is more on the number of refugees, which are, of course, half a million in last one month. That's more people coming to Bangladesh in last uh, uh, 30 days uh, than they came to Europe in last one year. Uh, but it is Europe, so we know more about that. But the total number of people devastated are more like one million, half in Bangladesh and half within Burma. And this is not something which happened in the past. Uh, this photo is older photo, but actual photo taken from Bangladesh side across river, which is, serves as a boundary to certain area. Uh, Rohingya villages is burned. But uh, today, until now, uh, there are 12 reports of Rohingya villages being torched. Rohingyas being attacked and houses uh, or properties looted. Yesterday, there were 16 reports. These reports come from some of the Rohingyas from inside, and we maintain a daily log uh, of the reports which we receive. Our estimate is uh, that there are much larger actions, but there are some who are able to connect uh, and are able to send photos and information of what happened in their community. So one million Rohingyas are uh, uprooted uh, in last 30 days, and here's the breakup. Uh, half a million are in Burma, and they're in worse type of situation. 
hundred twenty thousand were in the camps since 2012. In 2012, a major operation took place, uh, which resulted in displacing close to 300,000 people. 120,000 were taken, were marched actually, and I'll show you the photo. They're still in those camps. Only UN was allowed to feed. Our Buddhist uh, colleagues in America actually on our behalf approached the government that Buddhist American would like to feed these people, but they were not allowed. Now they are developing new IDP camp, internally displaced people, that is IDP, and 100,000 to 200,000, nobody has the exact count, are taken to those camps. Now UN used to feed those people who are in older camps, nobody else was allowed. And Professor Penny Green of the Queen Mary Law School conducted a project before she was expelled from that area, saying that the food given to those people who are in those camps is just 200 calories more than Nazi concentration camp. Then there are 100 to 300,000 people who are in forests and mountains and running away from their home. As some villagers run away in the daytime, come back at night, and sometimes just staying there is still trying to reach Bangladesh, which is no longer easy because photos or images were coming. So they have blocked the well-known easier route to Bangladesh through Bangladesh, uh, Burmese military to avoid all those photos. And those people who were taking odd routes, they have placed uh, landmines there. Those landmines have injured people. It is thoroughly documented. The government of Burma puts the number of killed at 400. Uh, while in my visit, I met many survivors of Tula Thuli. It's a, uh, it's a village about 25 miles inside Burma from Bangladeshi border. And uh, I also met uh, a former mayor. They all put the number to 1,700. And I'll tell you a little more about that just in one village. So if 284 villages are destroyed, uh, all may not have 1,700 people, but uh, death toll is substantially high. Each and every village, sorry, each and every, you know, when I started talking to one person, uh, other people gather. And when there are 10, 20 people and it becomes difficult to have conversation one-on-one, -on -one, I asked collective questions. And in collective questions, and they will raise hands. I asked them, how many of you saw anybody killed from your own eyes? 40%, 50%, as high as 60% will raise hands that they saw. Then I thought maybe they saw the same people. So I will ask them question, and they have very personal stories to tell. So. There is a reason why Burma is not allowing United Nations to take the investigative mission uh, and not allowing journalists and human rights organization inside. So worst situation is inside Burma. Uh, although focus is more rightfully on refugees, half a million refugees are newly arrived in Bangladesh. Actually, it's uh, 515,000 by now. But 90,000 were forced out until April 27. So if you count that, that becomes 600,000. And Bangladeshi, although they have not counted, they don't declare them refugees, they have been saying 300 to 500,000 Rohingyas have already been residing there. So more than a million or about a million Rohingyas in Bangladesh. So a total devastation, as you can see. Now this is so this gentleman, his name is Badiu Zama. He is a former mayor. When I started talking, the satellite image is by Amnesty International and they have counted all the villages, uh, all the houses in this village of Tola Toli, which has been destroyed. These villages, which you see right here, these villages, they belong to the Rakhine minority and these villages have not been destroyed. 
and uh, the I had detailed conversation with this mayor and several survivors. As you can see, there is a river here. It's a mountainous area. This river expand this way and this way. Village, this is also a river right here. So river surrounds three sides of the village. The existing mayor, uh, current mayor, who is not a Rohingya, who is uh, inside in that village, he told people that uh, nobody will be killed, uh, just houses will be burned down. So nice of a mayor to give that uh, story to them. And I asked them why you didn't run when they told, uh, or why you didn't resist. So question why we didn't resist is that we have nothing to resist with because military has guns. Second answer to that was that we thought we'll rebuild our homes since they're promising nobody will be killed. But the very next day of that news from the mayor who did the gathering of the whole village to tell them, uh, the helicopters landed and they started killing and burning houses and all people ran to this area, this corner. And it's a little mountainous area. We have video footage of people gathered there before those people were murdered. So mayor inside, who is not from Rohingya community, says 700 people got killed in that village. The peace survivors says 1,700 people got killed, and we have horror stories. Um, this young man, I was talking to somebody else, uh, but he was uh, staying silent. So I asked him, he is a survivor of Tulatuli, um, and that where is his tent? Meaning tent, there are no tent. There are rather huts, bamboo and plastic. Uh, they they build up something. So his name is Noor. Uh, he said that uh, he has no hut. He just hangs around uh, where uh, a TV tower is. I said, where are his parents? Then he went silent and told me eventually that his uh, both parents are murdered. I said, who murdered them? I said, by military. So where are his brothers and sisters? He had four sisters and three brothers. Uh, all are murdered. And then he showed me a picture of three little children, which are his brother's children. And he told me they are murdered as well. So I conducted many interviews, but I'm just uh, trying to uh, be brief here. Um, rape has been used as a major instrument of genocide. And there is a human rights activist, a colleague, who has the complete map of uh, each place where rape incidents were reported from. It's publicly available. United Nations did a survey before this recent arrival, and we learned the method how, why these people ran away. Uh, United Nations did very unusual. Normally, the reports are shrouded in a lot of diplomatic language and difficult to understand what actually is happening. But in this case, uh, five uh, persons wrote this report. It's an extraordinary report. They give the raw interviews of the women they interviewed, and they say 52% of all Rohingya women they interviewed uh, were raped. And I met several of those rape survivors. She is one of those ladies. Uh, she is from Tula uh, She ran away from the firing. Uh, these injuries did not come through firing. But then she was grabbed and raped. When she tried to run away with her baby, a soldier yanked her baby and smashed uh, her head on the ground. That's how killed the baby. Uh, other villages, and then she was attacked with injuries to her neck, on the back of her neck. And they carried her for four days. Uh, although it's one day away, uh, it takes longer time to get there in difficult situation. And thanks to Doctors Without Borders, that's the only medical help which I saw available in Bangladesh for these refugees. They have one counselor for the whole camp. Now you can imagine what that, that counselor probably need counseling himself. 
uh, how to do handle so much of trauma which you see there. Now this house uh, actually are the refugees. They invited me inside uh, because the owner of this hut actually is our interpreter over there. Uh, Rohingya language, although they are accused as a Bengali, Bengalis can only understand about three, four percent of uh, their language. So Rohingya interpreter who know English are the best way to communicate. So he invited me in his home. And although he has been in this refugee camp uh, for 18 years, uh, it is still the bamboo and the plastic. Bamboo and the plastic was the only thing they are using. And this girl in the middle is a 16-year-old survivor of rape as well. So now they're building new camps uh, inside Burma once they are not allowing people. And it is important to know what those camps means. In 2012, uh, in this circle, you can see the uh, military man. And in the background, this is not cr uh, clouds, but the smoke rising from homes of these people. So military literally was involved in burning those houses in Sitwe, background in the background is Sitwe, and they marched them. They marched them to uh, concentration camps, which New York Times wrote a report two years ago. These are the concentration camps of the 21st century. So they cannot get out from there. They cannot have a job and they are fed until about a month and a half when uh, United Nations was expelled from feeding them, they were uh, kept in those villages. We don't know. There are about 100 such camps, concentration camps there, 120,000, 150,000, but they release about 30,000 and settle them in a swamp area where there's no economic activity. So those people ran away from there, but from the camp, there are 120. They're building new camps of this nature now. So since there is not much food and medical help available, these type of people not only are visible in those camps until photographers were allowed to go there. This is a Spanish photographer who took this photo for us. So Rohingya life, so if you're a Rohingya in Burma and you're not in those concentration camp and you have not been able to run away to uh, Bangladesh, what is life like? I have daily account of those. It will take a whole lot of time right now uh, main shortage of those villagers who are still there is food. They go in the market taking a life risk to go and uh, they are refused uh, supplies. And uh, they are told they must not leave. So some of the villagers are surrounded by military. So they do not leave because right now they don't want them to leave because if they leave more news and more stories will come out. But life inside is very miserable. So if you are not in the camp, what is your life like for Rohingyas? So here's a comparison. Buddhist neighbors are all citizens. Rohingya Muslims, although they are indigenous people living in their ancestral lands, their citizenship was taken away by law in 1982. They have always voted and they actually have members of the parliament throughout Burmese history until the recent one. If they are Buddhist neighbor, they can live in their homes. If they are uh, uh, Rohingyas, they cannot live in their homes or run away or forced out. If you are citizens, uh, if, you're, if you're Buddhist uh, neighbor, you have one physician per 700 Buddhists. If you're Rohingya, there was one physician for 83,000 Rohingyas, only if Doctors Without Borders were allowed. But Doctors Without Borders, one and a half month ago, were kicked out and their offices and clinics were burnt to ashes. If you're Buddhist neighbor, you don't have to worry about rape. Probably criminals still exist there. But the United Nations says 52% of all Rohingya women surveyed have been raped. Some of them have been raped in a situation that they will take teenage girls uh, to mosque. 
and uh, then bring in soldiers, team of soldiers, who will rape them. And villagers are listening to their cries. Uh, and that became one major instrument of uh, people running away, even from some villages where attacks actually took place later, but people ran away before, because the Tolatoli, as I told you, they were assured nothing will harm them except their houses will be burned down. But next day, all houses were burned down and military killed them. So if you're a Buddhist neighbor, you can marry without a permit. Um, if you are Rohingyas, you cannot marry without a permit. Permit is rarely issued after heavy bribery. I asked them how much bribery. They say about one or two years worth of wages, which most of them don't have jobs. So if you marry without a permit, it results in 10 year imprisonment. Buddhist neighbors can have many children, as many children as they like, uh, by law. We have document of that law. There are 10 laws which are purely discriminatory toward directly towards Rohingyas, they can by law have only two children. Buddhist neighbors can go to school and that Noor Muhammad, whose photo I showed, who lost all his family, I asked him what grade are you in because he's 16 year old. He looked towards my face and said, don't you know Rohingyas are not allowed to go to school? Uh, so they cannot go to school. Uh, these are free people, not concentration camp, but Rohingyas living in that area. Buddhist neighbors can have a job. Rohingyas cannot hold a job. Rohingyas can travel freely. Uh, sorry, Burmese neighbors can travel freely. Rohingyas cannot travel freely. I have photo of a 18 year old girl, uh, not taken in the camps, uh, but uh, they ran to Malaysia. She is spent, uh, is, I say 18 years probably, I meant to say 18 months. She spent two years in prison along with parents because they were visiting their grandpa without a permit. Uh, so if Buddhist neighbors can worship freely, and of course Rohingyas have a lot of limitation in that area. So how is life in Bangladesh for the refugees? Bangladeshis uh, have been welcoming this time, unlike in the past. Uh, a, a, a some level of policy change, except that yesterday, all the boats which were bringing Rohingyas uh, from sea, who were on the seashores uh, to Bangladesh, uh, have been, uh, you know, smashed, and people, boat people have been arrested, and boat people have reported there were 6,000 people from the sea side where they came from, waiting for somebody to give them a ride. There are a lot of people trying to give them a ride, but unfortunately, uh, right now it seems they're not letting them in. So as I enter from the airport uh, to the area of refugees, we encounter three army posts. So Rohingyas are not allowed to leave a very small strip of a land, which is extremely crowded. So on the roadside, you'll find a woman with few children and a few more without any tent or something individually. And they will be every few yards as you run closer to the camp, then every few feet is a family standing, mostly without any men, because men are either killed or they are detained. Uh, but there were men, but 80% of the refugees, half a million who have just came, are women and children according to the United Nations. So this was another group uh, there. So people who are standing on the roadside, I asked them why they're standing here even after sunset. So they were saying that we just came and we do not have money to buy bamboo and plastic. And bamboo and plastic define uh, you know, those people who can build a hunt for themselves. But this is the way hut is. You can see a bamboo going right here. And these are uh, plastic sheet, and this is one in the making. And when you go there, you cross all of these things, or even worse, at one time I was stuck uh, in the mud, which was essentially sewage. Uh, you put your go from helmet to helmet through that. Uh, so somebody else had to, I was stuck up to my knees. Uh, somebody has to take me out from there. Food is extremely short supply. Bangladeshi, well-meaning Bangladeshis are bringing all sort of things and distributing. 
there are seven set uh, distribution points uh, but there is some one small artery uh, very tiny road which goes through all this area and logistics is a major nightmare and at the airport i did not see a single plane uh, of any aid whatsoever uh, and uh, so bangladeshis are trying to help united nation is still trying to figure out how to help they have a coordination group there with whom we have conversations so so if if bangladeshis are bringing a some truck or something to distribute food this is the scene otherwise there seven distribution points and they have uh, uh, you know almost a half a day long wait people just sit in in lines of four or five uh, before proper food is distributed so they say it's a very bad situation right now this is a home of that interpreter i mentioned to you how it looks like, although they have been there for 18 years so what the world can do uh, we are asking three things on behalf of burma task force and we think these are critical things one is just like the french ambassador or the prime minister of bangladesh the world need to call it a genocide the reason it should be called genocide is because there is a genocide treaty once you recognize it's a genocide it's a responsibility to stop at this moment nobody is taking responsibility to stop and the worst situation is those burmese uh, who are inside over there a uh, create safe zone inside burma uh, with peacekeepers mandate to defend these people this is a proposal of bangladesh prime minister and i think that is a good solution so these are indigenous people they're living in their ancestral land they have been expelled they have always been citizen they need to go back uh, and the third thing which we are asking is that nations should airlift supplies shelter food and medicine and america can provide a small fleet of 510 helicopters because without that distribution cannot be done because there is a one tiny uh um, artery and that is uh, even now when there were no 18 wheelers and all that will always be clogged and blocked because well meaning people from bangladesh are bringing things and supplies and the world need to threaten burma you allow supplies inside allow united nations and human rights organization otherwise face sanctions nothing else will work on these people why we insist that it's a genocide because it is a genocide that's the right name unfortunately when un official has called it it's a textbook case of ethnic cleansing i am very disappointed in that united nations officer who used this term because ethnic cleansing according to greg who is the uh, president of uh, of uh, genocide watch in international law ethnic cleansing is not a term at all so there is no textbook of law where this term exists it was invented by milosevic uh, in uh, in bosnia to to cast his genocidal attacks on bosnian in a lighter light and who says it is genocide seven nobel peace laureates including desmond tutu have said it is genocide parliament of the world religion actually awarded some monks who stood up against that at nobel peace institute french president has said it burmese uh, sorry bangladeshi prime minister has said it and there is a tribunal which was established during the vietnam era arsal tribunal it now survives in rome as a people's tribunal they held a hearing just two weeks ago one week long and it has uh, judges and experts from nine countries and they announced that it is a genocide so what can you do uh, since you being the people of faith i think we need to invoke uh, faith networks uh, for this purpose and you have been on multiple causes it should not be difficult for you to think of what you can do but we suggest one thing is that you visit burmataskforce.org 
and there is a get involved page in the menu and there there are multiple options which you can pick and help nightmare is such a big of this genocide that uh, individual ngos and relief they can help everybody can help but it, logistically speaking it will require government's help our government in the united states has committed about 30 million dollars Uh, the way it uh, normally happen it will take 6 to 8 months but they need to have airlift of supplies and possibly spare at least 5 to 10 helicopters to arrange logistically when us did that in tsunami or earthquake in south asia america's rating approval rating in those countries went 20 30% up that is the mother of public relation i would say second we are issuing uh, action alerts on the regular basis from burma task force twice a week what need to be done based on the ground situation we have people uh, inside refugee camps a team of people who are working in place uh, assisting uh, media people and what not and we also have network inside burma through which we receive our information senate uh, senator durban and senator mccain may god have give him good health and courage uh, for taking the positions which he takes once in a while which are very good very bold and nobody among republicans takes so that senate resolution 250 is very good so writing to your senators individually as a interfaith network or based on your church and your temple is going to be very helpful and those of you online who are jewish there is a group called jacob jews and i don't remember the detail of that at the end come burma so i remember jews for burma but in the middle there are other things uh, in new york and they are trying to help as well they normally show up with our team at different places so activate interfaith network for this cause uh, it's a genocide going on and everybody agrees to that now uh use the term genocide and uh, have those three ask which we mention and uh, october 29th is declared by burma task force for rallies and vigils around the world uh, last one we did on 16th for few days notice it took place in many many countries and many cities across america this time uh, we want to take a longer note of that so thank you so much and uh, now uh, we'll go to question and answers uh, you know you can type the questions i can read and respond uh, my apologies there is no moderator available at this moment so i will be doing that so i will be reading and responding so rosemary pace has this are there other muslims in burma not rohingyas allowed to marry have as many children as they want hold a job okay you have the whole list of limitation uh, yes uh, there are other muslims on the border of china there are chinese speaking muslims and that area also is uh, there is a lot of uh, you know uh, war and what not and uh, so just like other people there chinese muslims suffer according to that but they do not have any legal limitation of that type uh yangon used to have a huge population of muslims actually the way i came to know about the burmese treasury is my neighbor who is just sitting next door in my office uh walked from yangon his engineering degree from yangon university he walked all the way to pakistan then acquired citizenship there and then came to america 40 years ago he walked in 1962 so so attacks uh, started long time ago uh, so there are different waves of this uh, so they still suffer there are baman muslim of bama race and others in in matila uh, massacre which took place just uh, uh, two years ago none of them were rohingyas Uh, not a single mosque have been allowed to be built in yangon for last 30 years uh, although the best hospital of yangon is not the government hospital or private hospital but a hospital funded by muslim businessmen in yangon uh, which is operating since 1938 uh, so there are difficulties but genocide is not being done uh, to them 
but the people's tribunal rome based people's tribunal of uh, uh, their finding is that kachin people who are mostly christians uh, and are busy in arm struggle for a long time that civilians there are crimes against humanities are committed against them and other burmese muslims who are not rohingyas although genocide is not being committed they declared that uh, 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 the crimes against humanity is created uh, is being committed against them as well uh, so the question is um uh ishanta prem vardhana nice to hear uh, you there brother shanta my primary connection are with the national council of churches in bangladesh is there anything particular that they can do to support the refugees although i know many individual christians in burma i don't know the organized entities first of all shanta uh, you being uh, as a background sri lankan i want, i have issued a statement and a letter congratulating sri lankan government when about 40 or so rohingyas who were in a, a safe camp were attacked by a monk the government issued a strong statement and arrested people who attacked them that was extraordinary step as compared to 2 uh, 3 years ago uh, so that that was very good i think national council of churches contact in bangladesh could be used for bangladeshi government to remain soft towards these people and don't expel them in 1992 uh, the force i mean you know this crazy is going on for a while in 78 quarter of a million were expelled to bangladesh the bangladesh was led by a military commander the threatened burma and burma took all of them back uh, they started living their life in 92 the same expulsion took place then bangladesh government convinced myanmar and then bangladeshi government used at the at the at the point of barrel expel forcefully these people back over there so so right now a conversation is going on in burmese delegation visited them so they need to assign them a refugee status uh and allow united nations to count those people and have a proper arrangement for them i think this is uh, uh, extremely important if national or to council of churches can do something in that area that will be very helpful second thing is uh, there is nothing wrong if lot of uh, uh, bangladeshis and geo i saw working there especially broc brock i think it is called uh there are american uh, muslim physicians who are willing to go if they or somebody is involved in helping there uh, we can provide uh, free of any cost uh, uh, people who can go and help them out okay um what united nations have done so far uh, and uh, uh, any muslim countries helpful in this cause besides bangladesh Muslim countries don't know how to tell their stories, but uh, uh, almost ten, uh, twelve countries we know have uh, early enough. They have uh, some uh, aid came there, uh, but uh, their strategy is that they don't want to make it as a Muslim versus Buddhist issue. They are very careful because ASEAN countries there are half Buddhist and half Muslim. Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, and then you have. Uh, thailand and burma and uh, cambodia so they are very careful on this area and uh, they rather do silent diplomacy than open diplomacy although some have gone open as well united nations i must say i have developed a level of respect for them because the reports they have issued uh, are substantial except that bubu of calling it a textbook case of ethnic cleansing there is nothing called that is other name for genocide they should use the term genocide as french ambassador and the bangladesh prime minister has used so they can then invoke uh, the genocide treaty which requires uh, people to interfere and stop that okay um i have other questions uh, uh why sandy heart uh, nice to hear from you Uh, what the major disconnect please expand where the un or the global international security sector 
how is that different from the jewish relative experience or my jewish relative experience was it not the holocaust the very reason for existence of the un and the declaration of human rights you're right i mean world war and holocaust played the critical role in the united nation and declaration of human rights uh, it is very unfortunate in the case of rwanda uh, when kofi annan was secretary general we saw the failure and that it was not a religious it was both side were christians uh, but it was tribal and they failed to stop that right now i mean this everything is documented there are satellite images after satellite images of before and after picture there are testimonies of people inside even the suchi in her statement in english said well half of the villages are still there go ask them why they are still here actually when she said that the next day i was in bangladesh so i asked refugees why there are people is still there in those villages and they gave me multiple replies say that only where rohingyas were majority were attacked so other people were not attacked another answer i got there are people who want to leave but they are not allowed to leave by the military so there were multiple answers to those things but she admitted that 50% villages are destroyed the 50% are still in place so this is tragic and i think uh, uh, since sandy you mentioned your faith as a jewish community and family experience i'm requesting really appealing to the jewish community here that it is a true genocide uh, in place and the scholars after scholars i have done conferences at harvard university london school of economics st louis university um, uh, denver university uh, everybody agrees uh, yale university actually has a lengthy uh, discussion on that and they conclude it's a genocide i think more uh, mainstream organization with influence Uh, need to speak up uh, for it to uh, stop and i think george soros uh, wrote uh, something uh, re- referring to his uh, jewish experience and saying uh, that was before this incident actually two years ago that what rohingyas are facing is genocide and uh, he referred to uh, his personal experiences in that regard okay well um if there is no other question i would uh, just repeat uh, that there are three uh, uh, essential ask uh, which we have number one call it a genocide because once in bosnia new york times started calling uh, genocide after srebrenica massacre then interference and is people try to stop it here colloquially the story serves that purpose where 1700 villagers uh, were killed down, killed uh, on that basis so calling it a genocide uh, we should use that term we should ask people we should ask the editorial board of newspaper to use that and who whatever influence you have uh, second thing uh, christian is a large community of course in our country majority community you have good networks inside and talk to kachin people kachin people will tell you a story of rape going back 20 30 years and they are all christians uh, all kachin struggle and uh, so the same thing is happening here except it's a very big scale so second thing is uh, uh, going to be uh, uh, calling it for a safe zone inside myanmar as bangladeshi government has called for but protected by the united nations sources which has mandate to defend and the third thing from our government is that if there is a time to have public diplomacy this is the time send uh, airlift and helicopters for this thing available someone has asked a question this presentation available to others yes it is being recorded and i hope uh, that on our website uh, uh, i don't know where on the website but it will be Uh, loaded up uh, uh, for that uh, someone has asked a question is saudi arabia giving any assistance i don't know i did see saudi and qatar uh, bans there uh, uh, two countries are very distinct uh, 
uh, in terms of uh, help other than bangladesh bangladesh is taking a whole lot of people not allowing them to move they don't have freedom to travel or freedom to have jobs and what not but at least they are secure Pakistan used to give citizenship to these people but uh, unfortunately recently they stopped giving citizenship to them uh, so the arabia has given permanent residency to 200000 rohingyas uh, not right now but uh, several years ago so some countries attitude has been better than other i don't have the direct information of exactly what they have done and what they have not done um Uh, are there at least few significant buddhist group within burma that have denounced the situation with the rohingya well um groups i cannot say uh but there are individual monks uh, i had the honor i really ask to have my photo taken with other people but there is a monk who stood who who in in matikala uh, in matikala uh, massacre which is non rohingya people um, took muslims in the temple and stood on the gate that you have to kill me before you touch anybody so i had the honor of requesting him to take a photo and we honored him at the, on behalf of the parliament of the world religions but there are few people like that some buddhist who have been involved in buddhist monks and imam training on uh, how to have good relationship but by and large society is uh, has so much uh, fake information that they simply don't have groups but what was amazing was that uh, the the <coughs> kufi anon commission had uh, uh, mostly buddhist uh, a couple of foreigners some of them are uh, but they were able to still agree to something which may not be to my liking or the liking of rohingyas who want to uh, you know have full freedoms but it was substantial so it means those both has felt uh, that they need to do something um, so so i would i would keep that room and sometime Uh, these are buddhists who inform us that a attack is about to happen so in the past we have a network of 10 minute a uh, 10 minute to stop genocide campaign as soon as we receive information we have tens of thousands of calls going to burmese and the us government during obama era and ambassador doing something and what not and attack which has begun will be stopped because of that campaign who will inform them some good buddhist people so it's not that but overall in society most scholars say uh, that hate is too much when i personally visited uh, i personally f- felt nothing but respect from buddhist uh, inside uh, yangon and all that i did not encounter anything but muslim who live there and uh, they have suffered different uh, uh, stories uh, to share uh, of what they have faced and things of this nature so any last uh, call let me just double check if there is any other question left here well i think i think uh, 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 i have covered whatever i can see um, uh, in this uh, uh, well one question is that myanmar military is in power for decades why now after democracy uh so well democracy is somewhat funny there uh, because uh, you know elected leader could not become the president of the prime minister suchi so a muslim constitutional lawyer came up with this provision that she could be uh, you know in this senior senior minister or some position except that <laughs> that lawyer was murdered in the broad daylight uh, the top uh, constitutional lawyer who came up with this idea uh, marwis military has uh, uh, control of 25% of the parliament by constitution because they came up with the constitution which means constitution cannot be amended uh, even if all the parliamentarian agree if permis military does not vote for it so they have a veto on the constitution and constitution is the one which they drafted in which they took away the citizenship of rohingyas uh, in 1982 uh, 
uh, and they also control certain ministries and they are not responsible. And there is a clause in the constitution that Burmese military, any person of the Burmese military cannot be tried in any court. So, so although we're documenting their crimes, uh, they constitutionally uh, cannot be uh, tried. Well, uh, folks, thank you so much uh, for your time, and uh, I truly appreciate that. Uh, and I will be uh, available uh, if my email address you're looking for is uh, right there, uh, malik, M-A-L-I-K, at soundvision.com. If anything you can do, or you need a resources, for example, you need a memo for a senator, which you can customize. You need a memo for Congress person. You need a memo for the Secretary of State. Uh, you need a detail of whatever ask are. All those things uh, we can provide to you. You can also write to, uh, uh, to I will give you a colleague's uh, email address also. I hope it's all right with her. Uh, Maisa, M-A-Y-S-A. That is M as in Mary, A apple, Y as in yellow, S as in Sam, A as in apple, Maisa at Burma Muslims dot org. And any resources you need or any resource you have developed you like us to share with others. So thank you so much. I truly appreciate and I was very saddened that uh, Muslims are jumping up and down in America, and some newspapers are writing a uh, little bit here and there, although it is off headlines, but interfaith movement was not engaged. And for that reason, I'm very thankful again to the Parliament of the World Religions and many other interfaith network who sent out a last minute uh, announcement to, uh, to invite uh, the people uh, to participate in there. Thank you so much. May God be with you and peace.